Hello, I'm Fred Cole. The title of today's video is Where's My Healing? Recently I was talking with a Facebook friend that's going through a lot of physical struggles and she said that she had studied the Word and that she was even thinking it was her cross to bear that she would continue to be sick and afflicted and I tried to encourage her that that wasn't the will of the Lord but why don't people receive healing whenever they uh, they they read the scripture know what it says they pray why don't they uh, receive healing and so the Lord Jesus put this in my heart after I was talking with her uh, his compassion for her really rose up on the inside of me and gave me the inspiration to do this video and so hopefully it'll be a blessing to to uh, a lot of people the first question is is healing the will of the Lord Jesus I believe it's absolutely the will of the Lord Jesus and we've got hundreds of scriptures that we could deal with but we're going to deal with two uh, uh, Keith Moore used to teach for an hour and a half just on healing scriptures probably still does uh, first one's going to be Isaiah 53 I've written the scriptures on the board over here so if you don't uh, catch the ones I'm talking about you'll have the image of them Isaiah 53 surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5. The, uh, Isaiah 52 and 53 both all talk about the sufferings of the Lord Jesus hundreds of years before he goes to the cross. Second scripture is 1 Peter 2, 24. And this is the one that I use the most for myself. It says, He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds you are healed. Two scriptures, many more. If you need uh, proof convincing that healing is for you, just get in the Word and absorb it. First uh, John five thirteen and 15. Uh, John writes, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of Him. So this particular verse, John's basically saying if you know in your heart, in your spirit, that the, the will of the Lord Jesus for you is for a particular thing, whenever you ask in faith, you can receive it. And so healing is certainly in that category of the things that we can receive. The first test in this scripture is do you believe? Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? And if you can answer yes, then we'll go on. And if you answer no, then you ought to stop the video and go and look at Romans 10, uh, verse 9 and 10. Uh, you can read that, do what it says, believe, and you can be born again. Then you come back and get your healing. For those of you that have already obeyed the Lord Jesus, Lord of your life, let's go on. We're going to pray a prayer that is based on what the scripture says about healing and so I'll give you a sample prayer it's not not something particular but uh, Father I just thank you I thank you for your goodness and your mercy and that I don't get those things that I deserve and Lord I thank you that your word teaches that the Lord Jesus paid for my physical healing whenever he went to the cross 
whenever those stripes were put on his back, whenever he died on the cross, it's the blood of the Lord Jesus that purchased our healing. And I thank you for that. Now I receive healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Always end your prayers in the name of the Lord Jesus by the authority of the Lord. Okay, do you feel any different? Well, for most people, no. And the reason is there has to be a connection between the spirit realm and the natural realm. When you pray that prayer, the your provision for healing was deposited. Let's look and see what the scripture says where it was deposited. Ephesians 1 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Philippians 4.19 And my God will meet all your needs according to His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 1.4 And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in these last times. So basically the scripture says that whenever we pray, most of the time, the answer to the prayer is actually deposited in a spiritual, in a heavenly realm. And I've got a, uh, I got an example for you in my, my videos, uh, the history of man. I brought in the universe. Now this, y'all going to think this is like a ball from Walmart. Well, it's not. It's the universe. And so here's the universe. Lord Jesus is holding it in place by the power of His words. What's around me? It's God. The reason why they came up with the idea that the, that the universe was expanding is because they didn't want to deal with the fact that once you get outside the universe, there's got to be something else. And there is. It's God Himself. So the universe is actually set inside of God. Paul said, in Him we live and move it and have our being. So we're actually inside of God right now. So we're in a completely spiritual realm. Here's the universe. Book of Revelation says the day will come. That thing will be gone. It will get us, uh-oh, we, <laughs> we will get us a new heaven and new earth where people will be happy. Well, what the Lord has provided for every one of us, I hope you like the color of this ball, this I call a sphere of blessing. It's outside of the universe that we're living in. It's in the heavenly realm. It's in the spirit realm. And so we have the, shouldn't have thrown the ball away. And so we have the, the universe here and our sphere of blessing is over here inside of God in the spirit realm. And this is where most of the things are deposited whenever we pray. They go into this sphere of blessing rather than coming actually straight into the natural realm, into the realm that we're in. So this sphere of blessing, I believe every single person that's ever been on the face of the earth has a sphere of blessing. Inside of this is salvation, it's the Holy Spirit, healing, deliverance, provision. All of those things are all placed in this sphere of blessing. But we have to pull it out by faith. And so for a person that never accepted Jesus as Lord, this sphere of blessing went unused. All these things were in their life available to them, 
but they never drew on it by faith and accepted Jesus as Lord. The Holy Spirit is in here, the Holy Spirit that is given to every individual that confesses Jesus as Lord is in here, but He won't come out for a blessing for the individual until they turn their life over to the Lord Jesus. So as we pray, we're making deposits into this realm. And so how do we get it out? Especially talking about healing. Let's look at Mark chapter 16 verse 15 he said to them go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation to whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name they will drive out demons they will speak in new tongues they will pick up snakes with their hands and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. So this is one of the ways that we pull out of that sphere of blessing is by faith we reach out and take healing and especially when we're going to pray for someone else. We, we reach out in faith, take hold of that healing, let it come into our body, and then we turn around and lay hands on the person so that they can be healed. And Mark 16 is one of the best scriptures to, to lay hands on someone and see them healed, and I've seen that many, many times. There is a specific kind of way that believers are supposed to approach healing, but unfortunately, right now in the body of Christ, there's not very many elders who practice this particular uh, ministry. And so uh, it makes it more difficult to do this, but still in the scripture, so I'm going to read it. James 5.14 Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. You notice there's no but in this thing. The Lord Jesus says, if the elders will pray in faith, He will heal the person. He'll heal them, and He will forgive their sins. No question. The prayer of faith by someone who knows it is the will of the Lord Jesus to heal can reach into your sphere of blessing and pull out healing for you. It is then transferred to you by them putting their hands on you. A physical and spiritual connection is made. Note in both scriptures a physical connection is necessary. Whenever someone prays for you, if they say, if it be thy will, you might as well just go on. You're wasting your time and wasting their time. The person who is praying for you has to absolutely know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that the Lord Jesus paid the price for healing, and it's His will, His greatest desire is to see you walk in health and healing because you're a priest of the Most High God and He wants you to function in that anointing. But what happens if there's nobody in church that's ministering in this power, ministering in these gifts, literally going out and getting your healing for you and then giving it to you? Well, uh, so how can I get my own healing? If you are hurting, it's difficult. That does not mean you don't have enough faith. It means your soul is not willing to try new things when it is already dealing with pain. We are ultimately controlled by our soul. 
the soul is what allows the Spirit of the Lord uh, to work on the inside of us. And as you read the Word, you train your soul to understand the goodness of the Lord and His promises. As you watch television and are on your phone, you train your soul for the things of the world. So if you want healing, you need to turn off the television, you need to get off your phone and get in the Word. Train your soul to receive the things of the Spirit. That's the first thing that you need to do to get healing. I'll tell you what I do. I don't have anyone. I used to have a guy that, that would pray for me and, and really help to uh, build me up. I thank the Lord I'm, I'm very rarely sick, uh, but I uh, sometimes I get down. Sometimes I get a little bit, uh, lose my joy. And this guy, I could go to him. He had such a tremendous anointing that he could just put his hands on me. The power of God would just come, and I'd just stay there and just bask in the presence of the Lord. Well, the guy died on me. He's quite a bit older than I am. And so, anyway, and I have not since then found someone that has that kind of anointing in their life. Uh, what I do whenever I'm in worship, where the presence of the Lord is actually present in true worship, not just singing songs, not just gospel. I mean, real true worship where you're singing to the Lord, worshiping and loving the Lord. I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit above my head. And so what I do is I feel the presence of the Lord and, I, and I'm always hungry for the presence. I just lift my hands as high as I can possibly lift them. And I can always feel, and I can feel it right now, I can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit just above my head. And for me it feels like electricity. And so as I leave my hands in the presence of the Lord, I'm drawing out of that reserve that has been placed on for me in heaven. Whether I need wisdom, whether I need healing, whether I need provision, I just I just pull on it. I'm I'm there worshiping and I just by faith I just pull on those things that I need. But I'm a worshiper. Most of the time I'm not even asking for anything. I'm just there worshiping the Lord because of his majesty. Good news for you, if you're sick and hurting and you don't have anybody to pray for you, find some place to worship. You can do exactly what I do. You can get in the presence of the Lord, lift your hands, worship the Lord, and remind Him if you're needing healing, just gently remind Him of the scriptures that tell you healing's for you. One time, uh, I lived on a farm for years. I needed rain. And I had about five different scriptures that I would read three times a day, co confessing these scriptures. And one day, I said to the Lord, Lord, why do I have to read these scriptures to you? He said, you're not reading those to me. Now get that. I was reading those scriptures to me. And you know what? I went from praying for rain to speak into the sky. Mark 11, 22 through 24. Read that and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Once you have the power of the Spirit on the inside of you, you can start speaking to those things in your life. Uh, sickness, disease, uh, this particular lady has, uh, uh, from from birth, has problems from birth. She can speak to those things as the power of the Spirit in the in the knowledge of the goodness of God. She can speak to those things and they'll change. And so, that's what I'm going to leave you with. Get the Word in you so much that it starts coming out of your mouth and you'll be healed. Thank you. Goodbye.